know I love to be wined and dined in a Chicago cafe. The chefs are the best and the menus are so gourmet. The best cuisine on the scene is in Chicago land, USA. Great chefs, great chefs of Chicago. Welcome to Great Chefs of Chicago, a television masterclass with chefs of some of the finest restaurants in the Chicago metropolitan area. This time, from suburban Highland Park, Carlos Restaurant and Chef Roland Licioni. At an early age, Chef Roland moved with his family from Vietnam to his father's homeland in France. He grew up and attended chef school in Biarritz, then worked in restaurants in Paris, the southwest of France, and London, before receiving an offer from a French restaurant in Chicago. Shortly after arriving in the city, he met Carlos Nieto, who proposed collaboration. In 1981, they opened Carlos Restaurant, and in its four-year tenure has become one of the area's top dining establishments. In the kitchen, Chef Licioni works with unfaltering precision, freely drawing upon both his Vietnamese and French heritage to produce original Occidental dishes with a hint of the Far East. Licioni begins a liver custard with three and a half ounces foie gras, cooked or uncooked, one ounce of either duck, chicken, or squab liver, one half teaspoon flour, garlic, grated nutmeg, and salt and pepper. When this mixture is processed, one whole egg and one egg yolk are added. tablespoons reduced duck stock are added and the mixture is processed a few seconds more. Then, with the machine running, eight ounces of milk are incorporated. strained, then chopped truffle is added. The flan is ladled into small buttered timbali molds. The molds are set in a pan filled with hot water, then are baked for 25 minutes at 400 degrees. The sauce begins with chopped shallot that is sautéed in butter with chopped truffle. Sherry wine vinegar is added and reduced until dry. Heavily reduced duck stock is added and the sauce is buttered. Just before presentation, orange zest is added and the completed sauce tops the unmolded flan. The garnishes are blanched asparagus tips and a boiled crawfish. Mm -hmm. 
A slice of truffle completes presentation. The chef begins a pasta that was a specialty of his mother. In the process, there are 10 ounces of flour and three eggs. In this pasta, you have only flour, eggs, and a few drops of olive oil. Some olive oil is added, and the dough is processed until it forms a ball. When the pasta starts to make the ball, the pasta is ready. The dough is refrigerated for one and a half hours. Meanwhile, langoustines, or spiny lobsters, are peeled. One thing I find myself, the langoustine is better to peel when they are fresh than they cook. The langoustine tails will be used to stuff the ravioli and the shell will go into the sauce. Here's the same operation to check if there's nothing dirty inside. A second component of the ravioli filling begins with stemmed chopped shiitake mushrooms. I'm going to chop them and then I'm going to saute them. Some shallot, a little bit ginger, and a water chestnut. Chopped shallot and ginger are sauteed briefly in butter. Then the shiitake mushrooms are added. Chopped water chestnuts will also comprise the mixture. This mushroom filling, or duck cell, must cool before stuffing the pasta. I'm going to add one spoon of water chestnut. They are chopped already. Maybe a half. The water chestnut is going to, going, to, going to give the liaison with the mushroom. Using a machine, the pasta is rolled into large rectangles. The cooled mushroom mixture is spooned onto blanched spinach leaves. Seasoned langoustine tails top the duck cell and the filling is encased in the spinach. I'm going to wrap the, the, the filet of spinach over the langoustine. A spinach packet is placed off-center on each pasta rectangle, leaving the remaining sheet for folding. Egg wash is painted on the pasta surrounding the filling. And I'm going to stick with them. First of all, you pinch the, third, the border here. The ravioli are sealed with the pasta wheel and will be refrigerated while the sauce is prepared. So one is very hot. The reserve langoustine shell is sautéed in olive oil. One thing you have to do, you have to sometimes peel the shell because it gives you more, more flavor on the, on the shell. I'm going to put some few carrots. Few shallots. Celery. A bit of mushroom. And garlic. Chopped fresh tarragon is added. Here I have some uh, cognac, one of the glaze. And the flambe, exactly. White wine, sherry, and crushed black peppercorns will also be added. The mixture is reduced before adding fish stock. 
Here, now you've got this. I'm going to addition now. Voilà. After I put the fish stock, I'm going to addition some uh, cream. And this now I'm going to leave a cook um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. One teaspoon tomato paste is added and the sauce simmers 10 to 15 the minutes. Now I'm going to pass. Slow down. The sauce is strained. Chef Roland then cooks the ravioli in salted boiling water for seven minutes. You can cover. Sometimes on the langostino you can find some um, some eggs, the eggs from the langostino, and I think it's very nice to put with the sauce and for the presentation. I'm gonna put a half spoon. Just before service, langostine roe are added. One tablespoon butter will complete the sauce. The ravioli are garnished with whole langoustines cooked in salted water for several minutes. Langoustine sauce, red and green seaweed, and caviar will complete the presentation. Mm -hmm. Chef Roland removes the breasts from whole squab. They will be boned and browned with the legs in clarified butter. The carcass is chopped and will be used in the sauce. The breasts and legs go into a very hot pan. Squab pieces roast at 450 degrees for three to four minutes. To start the sauce, the bones are browned with chopped mushroom, shallot, garlic, celery, and carrot. When medium rare, the breast and legs are removed from the oven and reserved in a warm place.
When the bones are brown, Chef Roland adds chopped thyme, then flames the pan with cognac. White wine is then added and the sauce is briefly reduced. Duck stock is added and the sauce simmers about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, the vegetable garnish is prepared. Here's some uh, red pepper dice, diced red pepper, some uh, zucchini and some eggplant. Some uh, shallots with a very fine chop, and this little bit of rosemary. Finely diced vegetables are sautéed in olive oil with rosemary. They include eggplant, garlic, red bell pepper, zucchini, and shallot. So here we have uh, three kinds of uh, mushroom. Those are the shiitake. You have to take off the, the feet because they are very hard. Though. This is the mushroom that the hedgehog is from Oregon. And this is from the pleurot, they are from France. I got this. Chef Roland prepares a second vegetable garnished. Have shiitake, hedgehog, and pleuro mushrooms, which will be sautéed in clarified butter. The mushrooms and diced vegetables become part of an artful presentation that also includes cooked baby carrots, baby zucchini, asparagus tips, and lima bean-like fava beans. Mm -hmm. Before service, the squab is sliced. The sauce is strained, brought to a boil, and reduced. It should be skimmed occasionally. Butter is added to the squab sauce at the last. The chocolate cake begins with five eggs separated. Make sure you don't blow the egg, egg yolk. The egg whites, along with a little lemon juice, are whipped to soft peaks. of sugar are added and the whites are beaten to stiff peaks. Okay, now the egg whites are very hard. This a little bit of yolk. Just a uh, mix. The slightly beaten yolks are slowly added to the egg whites. The yolks must be carefully incorporated to prevent deflating the beaten whites. Two thirds of an ounce each of cornstarch, cake flour and cocoa are sifted together. Yeah, 
things very carefully. Cautious folding is again the key. Otherwise, your end result may resemble a chocolate frisbee instead of a cake. The batter is poured into a buttered and floured 10-inch pan. Chef Roland shares his secret for level cakes. The batter is pushed away from the center toward the sides. The cake is then baked at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. The cooled cake has been cut into two layers and is trimmed to fit a mold. The bottom layer is spread with ganache, a topping made with melted semi-sweet chocolate and butter. The layer will be inverted into a mold lined with plastic wrap. Brush the cake with simple syrup and Grand Marnier, then sprinkle with rum-soaked white raisins. Usually when you have a fresh berry, like a raspberry, you can put this on the bottom of the cake. It's very nice. White chocolate mousse filling begins with egg yolks, whole egg, sugar, dark rum, and Grand Marnier beaten in a round-bottomed bowl over warm water. A double boiler will not allow the circular whisking motion necessary to achieve the proper consistency. You press down, take up all the water, and you put it in the bio. Chef Licioni adds hydrated gelatin leaves to the mixture. The home cook may substitute one fourth ounce powdered gelatin dissolved in one fourth cup cold water. Make sure the gelatin melts everything on the egg wash, egg yolk and egg white. Very slow, slow speed. Your finger on the sugar and check the, if it does well or not. See? Uh, when you see the, the sugar getting hard like, like a ball, the sick is ready. Sugar and water cooked to the hard ball stage are slowly incorporated into the gelatin egg mixture. This union is then beaten on very low speed until completely cool. Good quality white chocolate, which has been slowly melted over warm water, is added to the cooled gelatin egg base. Ten ounces of whipping cream have been beaten to stiff peaks. Some of the whipped cream is briskly added to the mousse. The, cream. the white chocolate mousse is carefully folded into the remaining whipped cream. The mousse will also be flavored with dark rum. To avoid loss of volume, the white chocolate mousse should be used immediately. And I'm going to put another layer of ganache. The top cake layer was painted with flavored simple syrup before being spread with ganache. Now, I'm going to keep on the cooler. Refrigerate the cake six hours to overnight. I'm 
Ти никой не може. Ти за Марзипен, Мегови за Алмон. Ти би за топ. Chaffrolan forms a delicate lace of powdered sugar and egg white on the marzipan top. The accents are melted chocolate. A branch and rose of spun sugar made by the chef complete this appealing confection. <coughs> chef Licioni and owner Carlos Nieto recommend a Sensia orange muscat with the flan, Chassonier Montrachet with the ravioli, Chateau Lynch beige with the squab, and Fremont Abbey Edelwein with dessert. And now dinner is served. Join us next time for more cooking excitement. This menu compliments of Carlos and Roland Licioni, another great chef of Chicago. Chicago land, yeah, you did Chicago land.